Our next uh, speaker um, is, is from the uh, Federal Communications Co uh, Commission, which was uh, relative to the announcement that I had made this earlier. Um, now I know why Teresa Tubal switched with me, because uh, Julius Chinikowski, I hope that's right. Boy, tongue twisters, almost like Hopi names, you know, thick of cookie, you know. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, uh, Julius Chinikowski, uh, uh, I think I did pronounce it right, is the chair of the Federal Communications Commission. Uh, he was sworn in to office as the chair on June 29, 2009. Prior to his appointment, he spent more than 10 years working in the technology industry as an executive and entrepreneur. From 97 to 2005, he was a senior executive at the uh, IHC, IAC Interactive Corporation, a Fortune 500 company where his positions included the chief of business operations and general counsel. He served as general counsel to the FCC chairman uh, Reed Hunt, um, and before that as special counsel to then uh, FCC general counsel, uh, later the chairman, uh, William Kennard. Uh, please give him a warm NCI welcome. Thank you, everyone. First, let me uh, uh, acknowledge Secretary LaHood, who I'm so glad was able to be here today. And I know Secretary Sebelius will be here shortly. And you have people here from the Treasury Department, from the National uh, um, uh, Drug Policy Office, uh, from other important positions in the, in the federal government. I'm glad uh, that they're all here. I'm glad to be in their company. Uh, and thank you, President Keel, for that wonderful introduction and thank you NCAI for inviting me to speak this afternoon on these very important topics. Uh, it's an honor for me as FCC chairman to address such a distinguished gathering of tribal leaders and to reaffirm the relationship between the Commission and Indian country. Our ties are strong and we will make them even stronger in the months and years ahead. Many people have worked hard to draw us closer together and I'd like to acknowledge some of them today uh, my colleague on the Commission, who uh, many of you may know, Michael Copps, has been an outspoken advocate for tribal communities for many years, uh, and he spoke forcefully on behalf of the tribes during the development of our national broadband plan. Uh, all the commissioners are focused on this issue, uh, and I want to acknowledge, of course, Jeffrey Blackwell, who served at the Commission for six years as our tribal liaison, and after he left, he has continued to help us hear voices from Indian country. Our most recent tribal liaison at the FCC, Shanna Bearhand, uh, was a passionate proponent for tribes at the FCC. Since her departure from the Commission last December, her role is being filled with professionalism and vigor by our acting tribal liaison, Michael Connolly. Uh, our Deputy Consumer Bureau Chief, Yul Kwan, who is here today as well, uh, has thrown himself into these, issue, uh, it's into these issues and has been a real force for us to make progress at the FCC. Uh, and there are other members from the Federal Communications uh, staff here today as well. I want to thank all of these people for helping build a bridge between the FCC and Indian nations. A special relationship exists between the federal government and tribal governments, which we are committed to honoring and strengthening. We're, com we're committed to working with you on a government-to-government -government basis. We are committed to respecting tribal sovereignty and self-determination. We are committed to consulting with you on a regular basis to ensure that all tribal communities enjoy the benefits of a modern communications infrastructure, including, of course, broadband. There's another reason that the relationship between the FCC and tribal governments is special and unique. When it comes to broadband and communications technology, nowhere are the challenges and opportunities greater than in Indian country. As many of you know, as part of the Recovery Act, Congress and the President charged the FCC with developing a strategy to bring high-speed internet and its benefits to all Americans. This is our national broadband plan due in a couple of weeks. Broadband is our generation's great infrastructure challenge. It's like roads and canals and railroads and telephones were for previous generations. 
In terms of transformative power, I think broadband is most akin to the advent of electricity. Both broadband and electricity are what some call general purpose technologies, technologies that are a means to a great many ends, enabling innovations in a wide variety of human endeavors. Now, one of the main statistics I often cite when talking about the need for a national broadband plan is that only 65% of Americans have broadband in the home. The national adoption rate for broadband is 65%. Well, in Indian country, 65% is roughly the adoption rate for telephone service. That's unacceptable. Some of you have had a chance to meet my uh, chief of staff, uh, Eddie Lazarus, and you may even know his father. Uh, his father was a, uh, a real expert in Indian law. Eddie was as well, and in fact, uh, has written a book on the topic. I'm sure he's the uh, only chief of staff in FCC history uh, with uh, expertise on Indian law. Uh, Eddie went out to uh, visit the Sioux tribes in South Dakota. And he came back and he was telling me about his uh, visit. It wasn't his first time, uh, but it was his first time with a real focus on communications, communications infrastructure. And he told me a story that stuck with me. Uh, he heard uh, from some of the people he met when he was there about uh, two young uh, Native American kids uh, who had been driving a car in the winter. Their car got stuck. They had mobile phones. Mobile phones didn't work. And they froze to death during the night. Those are the kinds of stories we hear about what happens in Indian country from a lack of communications infrastructure, and it's what motivates us to take it seriously, including as part of our national broadband plan. Now, when it comes to broadband, unfortunately, uh, I mentioned that we, uh, we do know the adoption rate for telephone service in Indian country. For broadband, we don't even have the basic data to fully understand the scope of the challenge, though, of course, we know that the problem is severe. The best evidence that we've seen as part of our broadband record is that broadband deployment on tribal lands is less than 10 percent. Submissions from our record suggest that actual usage rates may be as low as 5 percent. So when we talk about bringing the technology of the future to tribal lands, I recognize the tremendous challenges we face and understand that we must approach these issues through their own unique lens. For example, while the number of competing providers is a real issue in many parts of the country that gets the attention of the FCC. The extreme isolation of most tribes leaves them with no provider at all. Where broadband is available in general, we found that a major barrier to broadband adoption is affordability. With crippling poverty on tribal lands, that's going to be an even bigger obstacle in Indian country. Put simply, bringing faster, affordable broadband service to people in Monument Valley is a lot harder than bringing it to people in Silicon Valley. I get that. I also get that these challenges mean that we're just going to need to work harder. Because for all the challenges we face in bringing high-speed internet to Indian country, the potential benefits are even greater. I spoke earlier about how tribal lands still face challenges in deploying basic communication services like telephone. High-speed internet is not only the web and email, it's a telephone. It's television. It's a library. It's a town hall. Broadband has the potential to help tribal communities advance farther, faster than any new technology in our lifetime. Broadband is a platform for job creation and economic growth. Studies from the Brookings Institute, MIT, the World Bank, and others all tell us the same thing, that even modest increases in broadband adoption nationally can yield hundreds of thousands of new jobs, and the same principle applies to tribal lands as well. Broadband is a platform for innovation. If you have a high-speed internet connection, you can dream big, bring those dreams to life, and then bring them to the world. Broadband also is a platform for solution to so many of our major challenges, education, healthcare, energy, public safety, democratic engagement. Broadband's ability to transcend the barriers of distance could be particularly potent for tribal communities. With broadband, entrepreneurs on tribal lands don't need to move to the cities. They could collaborate, innovate, create new small businesses and high value jobs because they'd have access to robust and open information networks where they live. 
With broadband, kids in tribal schools can have access to their classrooms, in their classrooms, to the best teachers in the world, access in their homes to up-to-date e-textbooks, high-quality tutoring from energized college and grad students around the country. With broadband, a Native American with diabetes can get dietary counseling on our home computer, a remote diagnosis in a nearby facility, and if necessary, someday, even surgery aided remotely by specialists at a teaching hospital. That world is imaginable. It's within our grasp, uh, but we're not there yet. We're not there in the United States in general, or we're not there in tribal country. We have to develop a meaningful plan to deploy broadband, create jobs and economic growth in Indian country, to unleash new waves of innovation and investment, to improve education, healthcare, energy efficiency, public safety, and self-governance in tribal lands. This is where the National Broadband Plan comes in. This plan has been developed after careful review of the submissions from tribal leaders. Many tribal governments and organizations, including NCAI, shared with us the challenges they face concerning broadband deployment and access. We also learned about tribes that have overcome these challenges using creative tribal-centric solutions. For example, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe is about to launch a mobile broadband network to begin service on tribal lands in North and South Dakota with spectrum purchased from a major wireless carrier. The Cordellin Tribe in Northern Idaho has established a tribally owned wireless ISP and a community technology center with a computer lab, a network operations center, and tribal government information technology services. The Southern California Tribal Digital Village hosts email, web browsing, distance learning and other services and links educational and public safety facilities on 13 reservations and is planning on expanding service to several thousand residents. The Clinkett and Haida tribes in southeastern Alaska are establishing a series of business centers equipped with classrooms, computers, and high-speed internet to support small and emerging private enterprises as well as individual efforts for job searches and distance learning. One additional lesson we learned from these success stories is that once broadband is deployed in Indian country, tribal communities become enthusiastic adopters. The clear message both in your comments and in these examples is that the unique circumstances of tribes must be considered in the national broadband plan and that tribal governments must have a central role in developing solutions to increase broadband access and adoption to their communities. So how will the National Broadband Plan begin tackling the goal of bringing broadband to tribal lands? The biggest concern facing tribal lands is simply getting connected. And the Broadband Plan will include a once-in-a-generation transformation of the $8 billion Universal Service Fund, converting it over time to broadband support and freeing up more resources to build 21st century communications networks, including on tribal lands. In addition, we will help more tribal libraries qualify for E-rate funding and recommend the creation of a tribal seat on both the Federal State Joint Board on Universal Service and the USAC Board of Directors. Even with these changes to the Universal Service Fund, a sizable funding gap will still exist. To help close this gap, the plan will also recommend creating a separate tribal broadband fund to support sustainable deployment and adoption rates in Indian Country providing funding to upgrade connectivity for federal facilities on tribal lands, including those managed by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the Bureau of Indian Education, and the Indian Health Service, and allowing more members of the tribal community to share connectivity funded by the E-rate and rural health care programs. To help tribal communities acquire technical broadband skills and expertise, the plan will recommend that the FCC expand its Indian telecommunications initiative We'll also propose allowing tribal representatives to participate in our FCC university training programs at no cost. To close the information gap about broadband access and usage in Indian country, the plan will recommend efforts to improve data collection on tribal lands, including making tribes eligible for grants for future broadband mapping and planning projects, and facilitating data sharing between broadband providers and tribes. To enhance communications and consulting with tribal governments, the plan proposes three new mechanisms. First, government-wide, the plan will recommend the creation of a federal tribal broadband initiative consisting of tribal leaders and officials from across all federal agencies. This initiative will improve coordination, 
streamline programs, and reduce redundancies. Second, within the FCC, the plan will recommend the creation of an Office of Tribal Affairs with enough staff, resources, and authority to consult regularly with tribal leaders and coordinate effectively within the FCC. The plan also proposes a separate task force consisting of senior FCC staff and tribal leaders that will focus specifically on broadband deployment and adoption on tribal lands. In addition to wireline broadband, mobile broadband offers tremendous possibilities for tribal communities. We will explore ways of improving tribal access to and use of spectrum, including how to improve the tribal land bidding credit, how to help tribes know what spectrum is available over tribal lands, and how to create additional flexibility and incentives for building out facilities serving tribal lands. Last, as many of you are aware, the Commission recently adopted rules giving priority to tribes in getting broadcast radio licenses in tribal communities. These rules will give precedence to federally recognized American Indian tribes and Alaska Native villages that want to set up new radio stations that serve communities on tribal lands. Many of the comments we received in the broadband context encourage the FCC to establish a similar priority for wireless licenses. The National Broadband Plan will recommend that the Commission look at expanding any tribal priority policy to include the process for licensing fixed and mobile wireless licenses covering tribal lands. There are more recommendations within the plan that we believe will help Indian Country. When the full plan is released, I look forward to working together to implement the recommendations and continually identifying the best ideas to meet our shared goals. Thank you. The goal of bringing broadband to Indian Country is important and urgent. It will require the federal government to recognize the importance of tribal autonomy and work hand in hand with tribal governments as partners. We will also work closely with leaders in Congress on these issues, including Chairman Inouye, Senator Udall, Senators Begich and Murkowski, Senator Dorgan, Representative Tom Cole, Frank Pallone, Majority Whip Jim Clyburn, these are all names familiar to you, and we'll be in regular consultation with them on how to make progress on these agenda items. Broadband enhances and will continue to enhance the ability of Indian nations to serve their people and determine their own course. The National Broadband Plan will provide a clear path forward for accomplishing these goals. I echo the words of President Keel in saying that our great hope is that the next year will be, like this past year, one of achievement. I look forward to building on the strong relationship between the Commission and NCAI. Working together, I believe we can make real progress in turning Indian country into a model for digital transformation and success. I look forward to meeting many of you at the FCC on Thursday to continue this conversation. I, it's a privilege for me to be here, and I thank you very much. Do you have time for any questions? Okay. Well, you know, I, I, I do want to comment, you know, uh, at lunchtime we were going over the updating uh, uh, plans for updating our website and, and uh, just communicating. So broadband communication is a big deal to the Indian country. Just as an example, you know, Indian country who doesn't, who can't participate in these meetings, we want to start broadcasting it out so they can actually hear these kinds of comments and these kinds of, of observations aside from, you know, having copies of these kinds of speeches because these are huge commitments, you know, in terms of improving our ability to, in, with regard to this infrastructure which, and the market that goes along with it. So any questions that anyone would have of the chairman uh, uh, with regard to uh, these initiatives and, and the, uh, uh, the opportunities that are being made available through his agency? Henry? Last month in the Northwest, and, and uh, one of the concerns that uh, we'd like to recommend is, is technical assistance for those tribes that really can't respond quickly enough for the need. You know, we have a lot of tribes that, that can't afford, you know, the grants writing and the capability to keep up with the, the changes that you're making. And uh, you, you have tribes that really need a lot of help in, in uh, providing technical assistance. Is there going to be any assistance for those uh, tribes that may need? Help. I, I hear you on that, and I think it's something that uh, uh, across the board uh, we need to re-examine what we do and improve it. This is a request that I hear uh, at meetings like this. I hear it when I go visit public schools in almost any community in the country. For reasons that are understandable, some of the processes that have developed to apply 
for various programs and grants is just harder than it should be. It's more complex. And one of the things we're going to do across the board is look to simplify them uh, and provide assistance to help the intended audience of the programs and plans that we have actually uh, uh, have a fair chance to, to get those benefits. So I think it's a good point and a very good reminder. Uh, Jackie would just remind me that uh, this speech is actually being webcast, so if you want to review it again, you can go on to our website and you can pull it back up again. Um, Bill. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as a uh, retiree from Verizon Communications and having almost 40 years in the uh, telecommunications business and understanding what uh, hurdles you're facing looking at getting broadband in the Indian country, I applaud your efforts. Uh, sounds like you have a great plan. Uh, I welcome, as an elected tribal leader, uh, participating in those consultation uh, sessions with you. And uh, just, I think you're doing a good job and hang in there. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. One more? Anything else? Well, Mr. Chairman, the only problem I have with our new technology is, is the, in the phone systems, the ID. I get less responses. I can't seem to, they seem to find out it's me calling now. I'm looking for money. <laughs> But let's give the chairman a round of applause and an appreciation for his uh, outreach to Indian country. Thank you for coming again.